Hello everyone, this is the All Atlantic Talks podcast. My name is Mariana and I'm a former All Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassador. The All Atlantic Talks podcast fosters the engagement of stakeholders, joint pilot actions and youth ambassadors of the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance. This podcast is coordinated by the Brazilian National Council of State Funding Agencies and is under the ANCOR project, which is supported by the European Commission. In today's episode, we will discuss one of the world's most iconic natural wonders, the Amazon River and its basin. And we want to tell a story of regional significance intertwined with worldwide importance of this region. And to provide some insights on this topic, I would like to welcome Professor Marco Ianoruberto from the University of Brasilia. Welcome, Professor. Hello, everybody. I would like to thank the organization of the All Atlantic Talks for the invitation, the opportunity to talk about the Amazon River. I am a physical oceanographer, associate professor at the University of Brasilia at the Institute of Geosciences. I've been working in the Amazon basin since 2012. That was my first work in the Amazon River, particularly in the Tocantins River. Since then, I've been working quite a lot, applying physical oceanography and marine geophysics methods to study the physical aspects of the Amazon River and his uh, tribute. I've been working in several areas uh, involving uh, gold mining province of the Alta Foresta region in Mato Grosso. I've been working with the confluence of the Negro and Solimões River, where uh, the Amazon River starts for the Brazilians. And I've uh, been working the Tapajós River as well. So I have uh, quite a bit of experience in the Amazon basin, looking at uh, physical aspects like uh, geophysical, geological aspects of the Amazon River. Thank you very much. And thank you for telling us a little bit of your work in the Amazon region already. Since the Amazon is a great source of water and other resources to the Atlantic Ocean, what is the significance of the Amazon River and its basin, both regionally and globally? And how do you see this contribution and the significance of the river? First of all, we have to think that uh, the Amazon basin is uh, the largest hydrographic basin of the world. It has a continental scale, so everything that happens in the Amazon basin obviously reflects regionally and also on planetary scale. The contribution of the Amazon River to the freshwater input and to the sediment input in the Atlantic Ocean is very important. The Amazon River alone contributes with uh, almost 20% of uh, fresh water and uh, sediment solid discharge in the oceans. The importance is paramount because, of course, the fresh water helps in maintaining the salinity balance of the Atlantic Ocean, the sediments contributes to the, the azotrophic activity, so the biological production, providing nutrients that are necessary for the algae production, for the primary production, so giving the first input to the trophic cycle in the Atlantic Ocean. So everything that happens in the, in the Amazon has really a paramount importance in the Atlantic Ocean. Sometimes we don't have the dimension of how wide and huge is this input of water, of sediment, and how these ecosystems are all connected with the inland because of the river. And the river helps to carry the resources and the sediments and the water and the diversity of organisms and everything that is very much important for the people that live in this region and also for the ecosystem to flourish. Thank you for telling us a little bit of that. There is also a climatic importance of the Amazon basin because the Amazon forest is a source of uh, water vapor and should be a sink of carbon dioxide. So it has a very huge importance on the world climate as well. I mean, the, the rain that comes to the central uh, highlands of Brazil is basically produced by the evapotranspiration of uh, the Amazon forest. Whatever happens also in the vegetal coverage of the Amazon basin has a really strong importance on the CO2 balance and a water vapor balance, not only locally, but globally, given the extension of the Amazon basin. We are very worried with what is happening in the Amazon basin because 
some studies have shown that the regions of the Amazon basin that are uh, subject to a very strong anthropic impact, the forest, instead of being an absorber of a sink of a carbon dioxide, has become a net producer due to forest fires and due to deforestation. So I'm really worried personally, and uh, I think uh, many people share the same worry about the, the fate of the Amazon forest. Yes, and, and this is especially important in this moment in 2023. We are facing a very dramatic climate impact and we are feeling this in a very present way because of several conditions. And I'm very sure that the Amazon region is also suffering with this impact very drastically uh, this year. It's very important to understand the sources and the sinks of carbon. In the coastal region, the mangroves also play this role. They are suffering as well with impacts of climate change, as well as the Amazon forest and the human activities that happen in this region, such as mining, deforestation. All of these activities have impact in how the forest will contribute yes. to, to mitigate climate change and how we can adapt to make these ecosystems continue contributing to solutions to the impacts of climate change. How have activities such as hydroelectric power generation, deforestation, and mining, how has this been affecting this region and the environment and the rivers and the functioning of those processes? These questions are really pertinent and I have a first-hand experience in this because as I told, I've been working as a geophysicist in gold mining regions and I've seen how the processing of the gold is done in a artisanal, what is in Brazilian is called garimpeiros. How is this process done to extract gold from the, um, the ore? The process is really impressive because mercury that is used to separate gold is then vaporized, burnt. So the vapor of mercury spreads out, polluting uh, wide areas around the, um, the mining areas, so-called garimpos. This is really worried. I've been participating recently in July in a campaign aimed to also to assess the mercury concentration in the Amazon River. Even isolated communities, indigenous communities have been contaminated by mercury because they fish that is accumulating mercury in their bodies. There is a really large worry about this form of mining that is really contaminating the Amazon environment. There are studies trying to recommend the substitution of mercury with other less polluting products to do this separation of the gold from the ore, but it's still at an experimental scale. So nothing has been already implemented in a wide scale to solve this problem. Regarding hydroelectric dams, I also have a first-hand experience because I've been working in the Madeira hydroelectric reservoir system. I've seen how this reservoir works. Fortunately, there are some of them that have well, less impact. There are some dams, such, the, such as the Girao Dam, that is a run of the river. So it has less sediment retention and has less impact on the sediment balance along the river. But there are other reservoirs that are uh, like the Tukurui Reservoir, that is very huge, that basically stops all sediment suspended load, impacting directly the sediment balance downstream of the reservoir. It is also a problem for uh, fish migration along the river. Of course, sometimes there are uh, some systems that are used to minimize this impact, but uh, the impact of hydroelectric dams in uh, the Amazon is huge is where the largest potential of the Brazilian energy matrix is for in terms of hydroelectric generation. So it's a very vulnerable ecosystem. This is a wide problem, really big problem. Because if in one side, Brazil has a very virtuous energy matrix, because most of the electric energy comes from renewables, thanks to the hydroelectric energy production. But on the other hand, this production doesn't come at uh, zero cost for the environment, especially in the Amazon, that is very vulnerable, both in terms of uh, the importance of sediment production and contribution to the Atlantic Ocean, also for stabilizing the, the coast. The Brazilian coast is subject to strong erosional processes, which has been increased also by the rise of the sea level. So whatever happens in the sediment budget is going to be reflecting in the stabilization of the, the coast 
the subject is very, very wide. It's very large impact. The Amazon River on the sediment transport and in contribution to the Atlantic Ocean. And the other problem is deforestation, as I already mentioned, that is uh, transforming the Amazon basin in a producer of a carbon dioxide, contrary to what was expected, not to be a sink of carbon dioxide. So this is a very serious problem for the world climate, not just for uh, Brazil. This is going to affect worldwide climate. I agree with you. As you said, uh, we came approach this topic from several point of views. We can discuss the problem of mercury related to the mining activity. We had the episode four of this season where we had a conversation about the impact of mercury on fish stocks. It was very interesting. We also had an episode about climate change and international cooperation that is needed to deal with this problem of climate change. And since we are talking about this wide ecosystem that is not just Brazilian, but is shared with other countries in this region, it requires international cooperation. And as you said, is also a social problem. It's a social and environmental problem that has impacts that will affect people, even if it's erosion in the coastal zone, the mercury problem of contamination, and also the deforestation, the impacts of climate change, all of these will impact our lives in Brazil or in Europe, in other parts of the world. And in the context of the Conference of Parties 30, that will be happening in Brazil in 2025. This is a crucial moment to discuss this kind of topics and it's very important that we enter the conversation about how important it is to connect the river with the ocean and to include the ocean in discussions about the Amazon region in general and to consider the Amazon river and all of the uh, contributions and inputs of sediment and water and resources to the ocean, understanding that everything is connected and if the Amazon region is very vulnerable to impacts of human activities or climate change, everyone will be vulnerable as well because we are all connected to this ecosystem. Thank you for sharing your knowledge about this region and the importance of the Amazon River and Basin. So I would like to ask you if you want to share a final message about this, this topic. This is another issue. Today is about uh, microplastics also and uh, the campaign in July which was an um, international cooperation with the uh, Ifremer of France and uh, CNRS France. It was in included in the mission also sampling of sediments to study the presence of microplastics in uh, Amazon sediments. One more worry <laughs> about pollution in the, in the Amazon basin. My conclusion is that the problem is very huge. I mean, we have only scratched superficially to the, the problem because obviously there are experts that can speak much better than me about uh, sediment, water quality and uh, coastal erosion, all the other problems that can occur in the Amazon. But um, it would be a theme for a much wider conference <laughs> about the, the Amazon. I would be very welcome contribution of other experts and people talk on uh, specific issues that have been uh, raised during this very short talk. I thank once more the organization of the All Atlantic Talks for the invitation and I hope this issue will be treated deeply in the future. I hope we can continue discussing this subject understanding that the Amazon region is important for everybody. We all have the responsibilities to support local initiatives, researchers, communities in the Amazon inland region and also in the coastal region, so we can discuss more effective policies and manage these environmental threats of human activities in a very just way. But I think our conversation is already contributing to this topic. So thank you very much for your participation. Our listeners can access all the episodes of the All Atlantic Talks, including the first season on YouTube, Spotify, and allatlanticocean.org. And it was a pleasure to talk about the Amazon region and the connection with the ocean here today. Thank you very much. And I see you soon.